Children, 
He raises us a poor from the dust. He lifts us in the evening from ashes to make us sick with the princesses and in our hearts to see honor. For the Lord is the Lord of the Lords and honor and peace of the world. Your kingdom is the end of the last kingdom. He will guard the kings of the faithful ones, but the wicked will perish in shadows. For not by my might is one more prayer. The Lord is at his service shall be shattered. The most high will be found in your heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will serve to his king and exalt the power of his own kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Lord is your father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As Jesus came up the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he. And they will lead many astray. When we hear of wars and the of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is about the beginnings of the birth pangs. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So please be seated for the next few minutes while I speak to you of my thoughts on this morning's gospel. May the words from my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be ever acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It seems to me a sense of peace and security came to a sweet new hall 20, 20 years, years ago on the fateful morning of September 11, 2001. A faithful song of mine is more than one of their terrible tragedy. The Eagles were in a report to the union when the media announced those regular events that occurred. Glenn Fromm and Don Donovan immediately wrote their lyrics, and together with the rest of the band, they laid down their track for the song entitled, There's a Soul in the World Tonight. Here are a few words for that song. There's a hole in the world tonight. There's a cloud here in Sierra Toro. There's a hole in the world tonight. Don't let there be a hole in the world tomorrow. All the fighting over who will be anointed. Oh, how can people be so blind? Until we turn to love one another, we will never, never reach our common land. There's a hole in the world tonight. There's a cloud here in Sierra Toro. There's a hole in the world tonight. Don't let there be a hole in the world tomorrow. As Christians, we are challenged to live as people of faith in such a world. And what does this look like? Well, Jesus gives us his limit of life in such a troubled world in our gospel reading this morning. The scene of this gospel takes place in your temple. Some of the disciples are impressed with the new temple that they are the great, started to build. It was larger than any previous temple, and certainly one of the most impressive structures in Jerusalem. The temple was more than simply a beautiful building, though. It was the serious connection point to God, and also a symbol of their identity as God's people. But did you tell them that the temple will be destroyed? A time will come when not one stone is set on another. The world as the disciples knew it was going to come to an end. Just as we were doing each and every day, the disciples scrambled to figure out how to live in such a certain time times. The disciples were that he used to tell them the songs that would precede the end of time. They believed that they knew the future they would be able to deal with it. The present might be uncertain, but if the future was short, perhaps they could live 
with the ancestor Juju. Juju tells them that there will be wars and serious wars, earthquakes and famines. These calamities were common in the days when Juju spoke to his disciples. He was not a good man on the inside track on my own with the future. He was telling them that they did not need to know the future. He was telling them they just need to know the one who holds the future to his hands. They had that they needed it. They just had to trust and follow him. Trust in God who holds the future to his hands is how we live by faith. To me, the message of this morning's gospel. Although it's we see both destruction and deceit, is ultimately a hope. It is the gospel of our opportunities and possibilities. It is the gospel of finding me and end my life. It is the gospel of your future and my future. And to tell us that sometimes one word, worry, or even from the alarm of our future and the future of the world. I've come to realize that when I think of our in the future, I'm not going to be really focused on the unknown and the time to come. I'm going to be more focused on the unknown and the rest of the time. I want to know the attendance that I feel that will withstand the test of time. Will the center hold? Will my relationships be over? Will my acquisitions and accomplishments continue to be identity? Meaning and security, or at least is an illusion of those things. Will the systems I've created in my life, well being and happiness, remain me intact? Are the foundations of my life staying strong enough to last? In other words, I'm focused on the large stones and the large buildings outside my life. So when I hear Jesus say, not not a stone that I have to find my other. All of you can come down. down. I get to get too twitchy. Maybe you too, too. Jesus says the very things that I am focused on are coming down. down. I can't help but wonder if I've missed this point, point and been distracted from one way or another. From the life that is waiting, waiting and wanting to, to, to birth through me. me. But the but reality is, is that Jesus never helped us to see signs and predict the world will end. Jesus calls us only to be ready. Jesus wants us to know that our faith Faith is not only that God will make our lives comfortable and that happened, but faith is that shows us that whatever situations face, God will be with us through those situations. The faith is not more than the future. Faith is being concerned about the needs of today. Faith is not mocking for a heaven when we die. Faith is being concerned for others with wisdom to them and invite them to experience the heaven that we have here on earth. Invite them to experience God's presence with which we have already been blessed. Jesus calls us to be with him. 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 And that message is just going to say to us today. Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come to my name and say, I am he, and they will be me, many astray. The disciples are in Jerusalem and seizing the magnificent temple of the Herod. Not many people know the large churches and the grand churches and still buildings, they must have been in awe at the sight. When we view the mount of olives, the glow of the white plates shine gold, brilliantly. In the church of the sun. But we need to know that the book of our heart was written rich just as the time of time was destroyed. It was written for a community who was trying to grow how to live between Jesus' resurrection and his return. Jesus was again speaking to his disciples and to us with an analogy. He wasn't talking about the end of the world, but rather how to live. When, when all our worlds last. It is in time and crisis that we learn life by life 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 It is in time and and struggle that we learn what is truly important. Truly important. It is in the failure and loss that we find the content of our lives. 
It is at this time that we realize that our soul, soul in us is greater than any of our first bodies. bodies. We do we want, want answers. answers. We do, we do want, want to know what's going to happen next. And like I said, we want to know what's going to happen next. And like I said, we want to know what's going to happen next. And like I said, we want to know what's going to happen next. And like I said, we want to know what's going to happen next. And like I said, we want to know what's going to happen next. And like I said, we want to know what's going to happen next. And like I said, we want to know what's going to happen next. And like I said, we want to know what's going to happen next. And like I said, we want to know what's going to happen next. And like I said, we want to know what's going to happen next. And like I said, we want to know what's going to happen next. And like I said, we want to know what's going to happen next. And like I said, we want to know what's going to happen next. And like I said, we want to know how do we live in a world that pulls us apart rather than pulling us together? First, I think we need to go around and assess what we have and not help us with what we do not have. We're being sold to so what false promises every day. If we have a better job, a new car, a bigger house, a thinner body, or a younger face, life will be better. But like we source, 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 of all the things in the past come from the false prophets that Jesus warned us about on the gospel today. Jesus said they will deceive a lot of people, and these are false prophets, and they do deceive us. They may make us feel of what lies ahead. They may make us happy with who we are. They let us allow other people to define and limit us. They may make us see that death all around us, but then the light that we may need. But in both Isaiah and the Romans, God says, Do not be afraid. I will be with you forever. God has returned to the world he created. But the Son of Man will return to the great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the ends of the earth. Secondly, think about what we really value in life. Ask yourself. If I only had one more day to live, what would I do? The end still hasn't come, even after more than 2,000 years. Life still goes on. Good and bad happens. People are born. Grow. Die. 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 We are the creations of a forgiving creator. On this life journey, both joyous and difficult times, we are God's own. We came from God, and to God we shall return. No matter what happens, we can depend on love to see us through. Jesus tells us that the end is just the beginning of what God has planned. God assures us. Behold, I shall show you all things new. So as the world seems to climb into chaos and all around us is evil, greedy, and meanness, rampant at home and abroad, let our cool hands prevail. Let us strive to act in love and forgiveness while standing up for what is good and right. We need to fill our lives with love, forgiveness, compassion, and the beauty of God. Be steadfast and to faith, Jesus says. Do not do not worry for him about what to say. say. And stand, and stand firm, firm to the end. end. So when our sisters can stand to ship from contradiction to discomfort, when our world rules in certainty to uncertainty, and when we have not even friends and family and turn to against us, these are not reasons to reject our God as he sees to be leaving him. They are just as God exists. They are trying to remind ourselves of Jesus who did dictate the events. They are trying to stand firm. When Jesus spoke to the disciples of the local destruction of the temple, the trouble was the unknown of that day, and the signs of the terrible day was on them. He was speaking to both their generation and to ours. We live in the interim between Christ's ascension and his return. In this interim, we will experience the same circumstances we will experience false prophets, warriors, and rumors of wars, natural disasters, and persecutions. Jesus is my mind of the disciples that the building is on the stone of the bricks. What really matters is what's both on and inside. In baptism, life like the waters are splashed on us. During the Holy Eucharist, Serve as a meal of bread and wine and is offered to teach us. us. This, this meal is meant to refresh and renew us each time we partake. 
Each student in your real reading survival really means that an entry to us as good thought and the guidelines while we are on our age journey. The destruction of the was not the end, it was always the beginning. It was not no distant hand to God. It was what the people who did it in safety. A building may be destroyed, but the place is far from us. Can never be destroyed. Because God is in Jesus and his word, as well as in the hearts and minds of all believers. Our hope is in Christ's return, which will be the event and the end of times. Let me give you an example. Many years ago, we had to judge on consistency, had to turn on to draw the teacher and play the horses with the heart in the middle of the event. Remember that one? I believe that's all on the soul of the Lord Moses himself. And then, in addition to afterwards, we asked us how to, how difficult it was for him to turn on to draw the teacher. That's kind of his plan. But after many weeks of teacher lessons, he told the director, I think, I think we could drive our chair all right, but I'm not all sure we're actually sure sure in the race. race. The director responded, responded You just ate a race, 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 and I'll make sure you win. win. Today, Today we're we're day, day, Jesus has asked us to stay in the race, race while walking by our high house to us. us. And Jesus, Jesus Christ is us, us. The us that as long as we are with him, we will win the race by life. So I think the challenge for us this week is simply this. this. The disciples are going to live their faith one day at a time. Let us learn to love one another, one another, so, one another, one another, one another so we, we reach, reach, reach the promised land. land. Let, Let us strive together, together to ensure that there will be a whole world tomorrow. tomorrow. Let us follow Jesus' Jesus example and the example of the Catholic Christians who have who come to us, us by staying in the race, trust trusting, Loving, loving and serving. And serving. Never know no knowing is this our last day, day or not. not. But being be sure, sure that no matter what, what, what God, God is with us. us. Amen. 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 <laughs> Make it make it 
Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the light of the world. Free us from all that darkens and ensnares us, 
and bring us to eternal light and joy. Through the power of him who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we will receive our offering as we sing hymn number 434, The Love of Jesus Calls Us. <laughs>
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Father's hand keep us from stumbling. The footprints of Jesus give us confidence to follow. And the fire of the Spirit keep us warm and safe in our walk with God this day and each and every day. Amen. Amen. And now, with joy in our hearts and a smile on our face, we'll close our service as we sing hymn number 565, Guide Me, O Thy Great Jehovah.